Brakate Yahoa, Brakate Yahoa Shai, Kohalayam La Yahoa, Bahasham Yahoa Shai, Racha Kurash, which means all praises to Yahoa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Parachah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> Peace, blessings, and salutations to all your brothers who preaching the gospel and truth and necessity, always in charity. It's Brother Mathati from Great Millstone Camp to branch out in Des Moines. And um, not sure I'm entitled to this lesson just yet. You know, it might go along the lines of uh, the Book of the Law. Something to that effect, which we can start with that precept. That precept is written in the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter. This is Baruch 4 and 1. It says, this is the book of the commandments of the Heavenly Father and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. You know, so the basic understanding, you know, of when you hear the law, you know, it, it it automatically reverts or it automatically uh, uh, goes to, you know, the laws of Moses, you know, uh, not eating the swine, the shrimp, the lobster, the crab, the catfish, you know, uh, keeping uh, men, keeping a beard on their face, you know, not lying in your heads. You know, the basic laws, the basic things, you know, uh, uh, principles we learn coming into the faith, you know, but um, the law. Is 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 really the entire book. You know, as it states here in, in Baruch, the fourth chapter, this is the book of the commandments of the heavenly father from Genesis all the way to Revelation, the Apocrypha included, as you can see, I'm reading out of the book of Baruch. Right. And Lord's will going to prove that now. I just looked up the basic definition of precept, as you can see, definitions from Ox uh, from Oxford uh, right here on Google. <clears throat> it says precept. A general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. You see, principle, rule, tenet, code, doctrine, guideline, law, as you can see there, statute, ordinance, order, mandate, instruction, direction, <laughs> right? So all those different, you know, uh, uh, synonyms for the word precept. Because when you go into the scripture, the word precept is, it literally means law. Now, as you can read here in Hebrews 9 and 19, this is Paul speaking. He says, for when Moses had spoken every precept, you see. So the laws of Moses could also be the precepts of Moses, <laughs> right? Now, when you go into this word precept in the Greek, as you can see, it says an order, a command, a charge, right? A commandment, a prescribed rule in accordance with which a thing is done. You see? So this is the way we ought to conduct ourselves according to these precepts, right? So it says, for when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of uh, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. So now as you can see, I just simply typed in precept in the uh, in the search engine. This is Nehemiah nine and fourteen. Matter of fact, I start up. This is Nehemiah. Uh, I started at 12. Moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in the way wherein they should go. So, you now you know, or, or, or it should be popping in your head, you know, the story of the Exodus, right? Verse 13. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and spakest with them from heaven and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments and made us them i'm sorry and made us known unto them thy holy sabbath and commandest them precepts statues and laws by the hand of moses thy servant so you go into that word precept it's the hebrew word um matazawa matazawaha matazawa and it says commandment a commandment commandment of code of wisdom right it says collectively the law which is commanded a law or ordinance Right. So the entire book is laws for us to keep is guidelines for us to walk within. Right. This is the book of Isaiah. Twenty eight. I started nine. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, what does this mean? Right. So is this saying that, uh, you know, he's got to teach a newborn baby? 
He got to teach a baby that's 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 just off the uh, the breast, of, you know, just off the uh, the breast milk. No, it's an analogy. And in order for us to understand it, we have to go to another precept. <clears throat> it's the book of first Peter two. And two, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Right. So once we hear this word. Right. And we start to believe we become. Uh, 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 as little children over again, like Yahweh Shah told Nicodemus in John, the third chapter about being reborn through the spirit. Right. What is the spirit? It's these words that spoken. This is the book of St. John. Six. And 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right. So it's these words, it's these precepts. That's what that quickens us, that makes us alive. So going back to Isaiah 28, 9, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and draw from the breast to understand precepts. Keep in mind, that was one of the uh, synonyms, right? As you can see right here, a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church. <laughs> You know, but hey, but the word doctrine literally means teachings. You see, docere, teach. Doctrina, teaching. So it literally means teach, right? So it's a set of teachings. Well, let's go back. Verse 10. For precept, for law must be upon law. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So this is how you see right us teach the scriptures so it's not just the laws of moses it goes deeper than the laws of moses right now once again as i said i just typed in precept in the search engine you can see all these different precepts pop up now majority of these precepts is in psalms 119 as you can see thou hast commanded us psalms 119 and 4 thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently verse 15 i will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways and that's key we gotta meditate upon these words man not just the law of Moses, right? But the totality of the book. Here it is. You might have a guy, right? He got a beard on his face. You know, he changed his diet. He keep the dietary law, but yet he's still emotional as all hell. Yet he still can't rule his spirit. Yet he get angry, right? He fast as the lip. He don't know how to bridle his tongue. You see? Well, him, him keeping the dietary law availeth nothing. Him, God, having a beard on his face availeth nothing, right? Because it speaks about, uh, uh, just grab that real quick. This is the book of James. Is it three, the last verse? Might be four. Um, Salaki, bear with me. It's the first chapter. This James 1 and 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, right? And that's through the spirit. The liberty that's been granted uh, unto us through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and continue with therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, right? Seem to be a worshiper. See, fearing or worshiping the heavenly father, right? So you say you're a worshiper of your Yahweh Shem Yahweh You got a beard on your face. Once again, you keeping the dietary laws, right? You walking around with your fringes on, right? It says, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion, this man's worship is vain. You see that? So it goes deeper than just having fringes on. It goes deeper than just having a beard on your face. It goes deeper because you don't eat pork. You see, it's the renewal of oneself, man. It's the changing of, of how we think, how we move, how we have our being. Going back into this definition, precept. A general rule intended to regulate behavior 
and thought, man. That says or, but no, we're going to put and. Because everything starts in the mind. That's why it's the renewal, right, of the heart, the renewal of the mind. In Romans 12, uh, uh, the second chapter, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the heavenly father, man. Same thing with the women. You got these women coming into the faith, uh, you know, head wrapped tight as hell. They got the dresses on, but here it is. They still unruly at home underneath, uh, 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 underneath their husband. They still uh, uh, um, usurping authority over the man. That means her worship is vain. You see? Because it's not the outward adorning. It's not It's not the outward appearance. See, guys change their appearance and they diet and they think they own something, man. <laughs> like Elder Debashpa said a while back, I said a thousand shaloms. I'm on one. That nigga goes deeper than that, man. It's the renewal of oneself. That's why it says put off the former conversation, the former behavior, the old man, and be renewed. Through the spirit, be renewed through these words. Let's get that. And that's why it's important, right, to meditate on the words, right, on these precepts. This is Ephesians 4 and 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, when you go into the word conversation, manner of life, conduct, behavior. You see, the way you used to be, you got to change that completely. The former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? That you may put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. Man, there's another one. That's the one. Colossians 3 and 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, man. You see? So now let's go back to uh, uh, to the precept. Psalms 119.15 again. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. So this is the book of the law. Did not Yahweh Shai, right, say this statement? Now, this is written in Psalms 82 and 6, as you can see. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, when you read down in John 10 and 34, Yahweh shall answer them, is it not written in your law? Where did we just read that out of? We read that out of Psalms, but yet Yahweh shall himself called it the law, because this is the book of the law. This is the book of precepts. This is the book of commandments that we ought to take heed to in order to please the Heavenly Father, man. Yahweh shall answer them, it is, it, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Once again, where was that written out of? The book of Psalms. So the book of Psalms is considered the law as well. Not only that, but um, let me narrow this down. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 14. Um, yep, this is first Corinthians 14 and I'll start at 20 brethren, be not children in understanding how be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men, which this word men in the Greek is teleos, right? Which goes back into consummate human integrity and virtue being mature through the spirit, you know, grow growth. Mental and moral character, <laughs> right? Mental and moral character. That's what these words do for us, man. That's why in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, it says, What strong meat belong unto them who are of full age? That's the same Greek word, teleos, who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This is what the Lord is bringing us up to. Now, as you read that fifth chapter, the last part, and you go into the sixth chapter, right? Because these things were letters before they were broken up into chapters. Six and one says, let us go on, therefore, unto perfection. So this thing is about growth and maturity in the spirit. Right. But let's read this precept. Verse 21. In the law, it is written, 
with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Now, where is this written out of? Isaiah 28 and 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Which all I needed to do was read the next verse early on, you know, when we was in Isaiah 28. But showing you, Paul called the book of Isaiah the law. You see? So the prophets is considered the law. Psalms is considered the law in the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, because what's the definition of that precept? It says a code of wisdom. So when we read in the book of Sirach and we read in the book of Baruch and we're reading in the book of uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. These things are what? Are guidelines for us to walk within. Right. To live according to, to the best of our ability. You see? Now let's go back. That's why I say it's through thy precepts. I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. This is truly how we think. This is how we reason. In the book of Sirach, the 14th chapter. Sirach 14 and 20. Blessed is the man that doeth meditate good things in wisdom and that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. You see? So yeah, our reasoning is out of the holy book, man. Our behavior and how we move, it's all you should be able to read while we do what we do, right? That's what Paul uh, said here. It's the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 5. I'm sorry, it's four. Nope, 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 it's three. Yep. The second Corinthians three. And let's start at one. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Just like what? We're the epistles of the apostles, man. And the apostles are the epistle, meaning a written letter of the men who taught them and so forth and so on. Going all the way back to our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Shai is the author <laughs> and finisher of our faith as it is written, right? Verse two, for so much as ye are manifestly, I'm sorry, it says for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Yahweh Shai, you see, ministered by us. Written not with ink. So just like how uh, uh, you have the letters of Paul, right? But it was ministered by, uh, when you read them, someone was written by Timothy, <laughs> you know? Well, the same thing with these electronic epistles. When we put together these lessons, starting with Apostle Taha on down, this is Yahweh Shah speaking, but we're ministering it. We're writing it, uh, you know, hearing it from his mouth, man. I hope I make sense with that. Hey, the perfect example of that is in the book of Ezra. Second Edris, you know, Edris was uh, uh, crying out to the Lord and he was saying how, you know, they burned the law and we didn't have uh, uh, any books, right, of our of our forefathers, you know, the laws of Moses and the prophets and those things. We didn't have those things. So Edris asked the Lord, you know, to uh, fill me with the spirit of understanding so I may write these things so that they can have, you know, so they, they, they could know. Let's get that. Let's get that. I'm butchering it. Because this is what Yahweh Shah is doing for us, man. This is what Yahweh, right? Through his begotten son, only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, is doing for us through the Holy Spirit. You see that? Now, let's see. Uh... <clears throat> this second edge is 14. Verse 37, it says, so I took the five men as he commanded me and went into the field and remained there. And the next day, behold, a voice called me saying, Ezra, open thy mouth and drink that I give thee to drink. Then opened I my mouth and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full as it were with water. 
but the color of it was like fire. And Yahweh Shah, uh, well, yeah, you know, because the spirit of Yahweh Shah is upon us to say and speak these things. But in the book of Jeremiah, it says, uh, uh, it's not my word like a fire. And these people would, and it shall kindle in them, man. Also, John 7 and 38, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see, so what Ezra is drinking is, 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 is the spirit being poured into him, man. Verse 40, and I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding and wisdom grew in my breast, for my spirit strengthened my memory, and my mouth was opened and shut no more. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told. Which they knew not, <laughs> they didn't know what was going on, but they were writing what the, the things that Ezra was speaking, man. And they got that out of uh, 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 the, um, the book of Eli, got this out of the scriptures, man. At the end when uh, Eli was uh, sitting there on the couch and he was speaking and dude got to type in the scriptures. They got that straight out of the scriptures, man, you know, but it says. And they sat 40 days and they wrote in the day and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spake in the day and I held not my tongue by night. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books, you know, and as you continue to read, uh, matter of fact, I keep reading. And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled that the highest spake saying the first that thou has written published openly that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the 70 last that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge, and I did so. You know, but the point is that Ezra was speaking, and those men were writing. Well, that's the same thing that's taking place in the spirit. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is speaking, and we're writing. <laughs> you know? That's why in John 10, Yahweh Shai said, my sheep hear my voice. Well, it's the, it's the Lord's men that you see and hear out there in the highways and hedges. But in the spirit, it's our Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, man. So let's read this again. Verse 3, 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. It says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Yahweh Shah, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living power, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Yahweh Shah to the most Howard. You know? But we are we are those epistles, man. <laughs> to minister these things, right? Unto the hopeful elect. But going back to uh you know, this Psalms, which is it, it, it's plenty of them, you know. Um, verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. And that's being able to navigate <laughs> from precept to precept, man. Being able to paint the picture. You know? Being able to speak of the wonders and the might and majesty of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and the things he's performed for our forefathers, man. And the things he's going to perform for us in these, in the, in these coming days. Verse 40. Be behold, I have longed after thy precepts Quicken me in thy righteousness. Verse 45, I will walk at liberty for I seek thy precepts and so forth and so on. You know, as you can see, you know, Psalms 119 is littered, <laughs> you know, it's filled. Verse 128, therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. You see? So this is the way of righteousness, man. That's why the Lord said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the heavenly father. If any man minister, let him do it according to the ability that the most high giveth, that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah may be glorified, man. Roughly paraphrasing first Peter, the fourth chapter, I believe it's the 11th verse, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but I think that's a good place to end it. Lord, we all, you know, I hope this was edifying, you know, because it goes deeper than just the laws of Moses, man. You know, it goes so much more deeper than that. You know, it's about the renewal of one uh, of ourselves. It's about moving in the spirit. Though. We read in we read in uh, John six and sixty three that um, the words that I speak are spirit and life, right? Well, what did Paul tell us? The book of Galatians, chapter five, and verse sixteen. This I say then: walk in the spirit, walk in these words, walk in these precepts, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. One of the precepts is what? Be content with what we have, man. Another precept says labor not to be rich, <laughs> right? 
Another precept says, give us this day our daily bread. So you got guys with the mentality of, I don't want to be woke and broke. <laughs> you know, you got guys with the mentality of, you know, oh, y'all make the servant of the Lord boring, man. Let's turn up and party. Where the precepts tell us it's better to go into the house of mourning than the house of feasting. You see, just because these guys got a beard on their face and they got fringes on don't mean they're serving the Lord, man. We have to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's John, the fourth chapter. That's commanded of us, man. This I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Meaning when you go into, you know, the things of the spirit, right? There's no law against the things of the spirit, you know? And it says uh, how we're under grace. But as long as we walking in the spirit, it says we're no law, we're, uh, where there is no law. There is no transgression. I'm roughly paraphrasing a precept. So if we're walking in the spirit and we're fulfilling these things, then there is no sin within us, man. So, Lord's will, once again, I hope this was edifying. You know, the water Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, for giving me spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Hey, Shalom.